All right, today we're talking about mutations Whoa. and RNA. All right, so mutations, we're talking about what happens if there's a mistake in your copying of your DNA and how that changes you, what consequences will have for you or any organism where a mutation happens in the DNA. But before we can talk about mutations, we have to talk about something called RNA. This should sound familiar. RNA, what does that sound like? Oh yeah, it sounds like DNA. That's kind of similar, right? RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA is just the reason it's deoxyribose is because there's no oxygen in one of those carbons on the chemical structure versus ribonucleic acid has all the oxygens, right? The other way though, let's talk about, let's write down what this stands for. So RNA is ribonucleic acid. The full name is ribo, ribonucleic acid. Ribonucleic acid, not deoxyribo, but ribonucleic acid. And something interesting, if you remember DNA, DNA, remember the shape of DNA, right? It's that in that double helix because it's a double stranded molecule, there's two strands. RNA only has one strand, right? It's single stranded molecule, right? RNA is a single, single stranded molecule. Whew. All right, single strand, so not double stranded, but single stranded. And the last difference between RNA and DNA is RNA, remember those bases in DNA, A, T, C, and G, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine? RNA has those too, except there's no thymine in RNA. Instead, it's replaced by a base called uracil. So let's write that down because it's super important. All right? RNA uses uracil or U to replace thymine, right? There's no thymine in RNA, right? So it only has uracil, which we abbreviate U, replaces thymine, right? So that's important. Why is that important? Because we need to talk about something called the central dogma, ba -ba -ba, central dogma of biology. What the central dogma means is like, this is like a big, big idea in biology, right? And more or less what the central dogma of biology means, nothing really happens in life unless proteins are made, right? So the central dogma of biology says, in order for your genes to be expressed in your phenotype, proteins have to be made. Because if you remember, DNA has the instructions, right? It's that long molecule has all the instructions to build crazy organisms. But that's cool, but instructions don't do anything, right? They need something to actually build it. So somebody needs to read those instructions and then go and start making the organism, right? And what proteins are, proteins are super important because they go around in the job uh, actually expressing the genes, do different jobs in the body to express the genes. So DNA must be turned into proteins to show your phenotype, your traits, right? Your hair color, eye color, um, your dimples, no dimples, hairline, hitchhiker's thumb, no hitchhiker's thumb, whatever, right? All that is determined by the proteins that are made from the instructions from your DNA, all right? So what's the central dogma? The big, big idea in all of biology is that in order for genes to be expressed, in order for genes, remember genes are section of your, sections of your DNA, in order for genes to be expressed, they must be made into, be made into proteins. To be expressed, Right, that means show up. In order for genes to be expressed, they must be made into proteins. Whoa. Must be made into proteins. Right? This is a big idea, right? Nothing ha happens unless proteins go in your are made to go do the jobs in your body, right? So instructions are great, DNA is awesome. Right, but it has to actually go lead to actually something being made, right? And those proteins do that job. So the proteins are super important, guys. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so how this happens is you start with the DNA molecule, you start with the instructions, DNA. And from that DNA, that DNA is then turned into RNA that we just talked about. So DNA unzips, remember it's double stranded, it unzips, one strand of that DNA molecule gets red, and that gets turned into a complementary RNA strand. And from that RNA, that RNA is then turned into a protein, all right? So DNA is made into an RNA. DNA codes for RNA, and RNA then has the instructions to build the proteins, right? So when you turn DNA into RNA, that's called transcription. 
transcription. Transcription. I know you can't really read that. Sorry, I'll do better here. Actually, I'm going to erase it because that's important. DNA to RNA is called transcription. Transcription, right? An RNA made to protein, that's called translation. Translation. All right, transcription and translation. So maybe another video will actually get into the details about what happens during transcription, what happens during translation. But right now we're just getting the big, big ideas of the central dogma. DNA turns into RNA, RNA then builds proteins. Right, the way I kind of remember this, guys, transcription has a C. So we know transcription comes before translation, right? Because C is before L. Right, and that's just the way I remember the order. But we'll talk more about those in another video. All right, so central dogma. Nothing matters unless proteins are made to actually make, do the things in your body to make your traits. So DNA is the instructions, builds RNA, and RNA is then the instructions to build proteins, okay? So another vocab word we need to talk about is something called a codon. A codon is three bases, a sequence of three bases in the long DNA molecule. So if you remember, DNA has those bases, A, T, C, and G, right? And three of them together makes one codon. And a codon then codes for an amino acid, which we'll talk about, right? So a codon from RNA makes amino acid, and amino acids come together to build a protein, all right? So first, let's write down what a codon is. So a codon is a sequence, sequence, sequence of three bases slash nucleotides that make a an amino acid. Okay. Sequence of three bases that make an amino acid. All right. Um, and then a chain, a bunch of amino acids make a protein. All right, so let's add that as well. A chain of amino acids build a protein. Okay, so a codon is three letters or three bases or nucleotides in a DNA molecule. Remember, there's trillions, millions, lots and lots and lots of those bases in a DNA molecule because that's so many instructions, but only three of them codes, makes one codon, right? And three of them together then make an amino acid and those amino acids start to get put together to build a protein. All right, so let's do an example to kind of make this make sense a little bit more. So we're gonna take a hypothetical DNA strand. Remember, DNA is double-stranded but RNA is made from one of those strands. So we're gonna write down one side of DNA. Then that DNA is then gonna code for, we're gonna transcribe this DNA to RNA. Then the RNA we're gonna translate into a protein and amino acid. So let's do an example. All right, so let's say our DNA molecule was, let's write green. Okay, maybe we had a DNA molecule that was A, T, G. And then maybe we had G, C, C, maybe we'll add A, T, G. All right, what you'll notice here, whoop, almost fell, is that I wrote these at three letters at a time. Why? Great question. Because, remember, three letters is one codon. So this, right here, is one codon. So that's one codon, here's another codon, here's another codon. Codon's three letters or three bases together. All right, now here's our DNA. Now we need to transcribe it into RNA. So remember, remember we did this complementary stuff in our last video about DNA? We're doing the same thing here. So what goes with A? Usually it's thymine, right? Usually A and T pair together, they're complementary. But remember up here, guys, there's no thymine in RNA. There's only U. So A, when turned into RNA, is going to code for U, uracil. All right, so we're going to have U. T is going to pair with A, G with C, G with C, C with G, C with G. Let's see if we can do this last one. I'll give you three seconds. Yep. All right. So A with 
U, remember there's no T, T with A, then G with G with uh, C. G with C. All right, so that part's pretty easy. We have the DNA, we transcribed it to RNA. Now from this RNA, we need to transcribe it, or translate it, I'm sorry, into a protein, all right? So the way you do this, you usually use a genetic codon chart. So I'm gonna show you what a codon chart looks like. Codon chart. I like to use this one. All right, so this is gonna be tough. I'm gonna try my best here. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. This is what a codon chart kind of looks like, right? What it has is that's the different nucleotides, right? There's different versions of what these charts look like. This is the one I like to use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this RNA into a protein. The way you do this is you start here in the middle and you move to the outside. So if our RNA is UAC, we start in the middle. Let's find U. Here's U, then A, then C. Codes for triosine. That's an amino acid. So you write TRY. So we're gonna abbreviate it. TRY is our amino acid. TRY, triosine. And then we have CGG. Again, you start in the middle. Here's C. Where's G? G. Oh, nope. C, G, G codes for arginine. So you're ARG. A, R, G. Then we have UAC. UAC. So start in the middle. Here's U. Here's A. Oh, is it the same thing? Yeah, UAC. We did the same thing. We made triosine again, right? Triosine. All right, I'm actually going to add one more here. Let's add one more. Let's say this DNA strand went longer. And let's say we had um, uh, A, uh, T, A, T, C. All right, maybe we had A, T, C. All right, let's trans... Scribe that into RNA, so A would go with U, T would go with C, uh, A, sorry, and C would go with G. All right, now let's find the amino acid that's produced, right? UAG, so here's U, here's A, here's G, what's that say? It says stop, right? So you're gonna write stop. That means stop building the protein. Stop building the protein, all right? So this protein's been made, it's then gonna be released from the cell, it's gonna go do a job in your body and start to express those traits, right? Start to build those traits. So what you notice here, guys, is that from here to here, we did transcription. This is trans transcription. And this was translation. Right? So we transcribed DNA to RNA, and then we translated the RNA into these. Each of these was one amino acid. Here's an amino acid, here's an amino acid, here's an amino acid, here's an amino acid. And together, as they get chained together, they make one protein. So this is one long protein, and each of these individual guys that we found using that codon chart was an amino acid. All right, so that was a lot. Right? We talked about what RNA was. We introduced it. We talked about this really big idea in biology that we need proteins to actually show up, for your traits to show up in your phenotype, for your genes to be expressed. We talked about what a codon is. We talked about transcription, translation. And then we did an example. That's great, but we haven't even talked about mutations. What happens if there's a mistake during any of this kind of stuff? Is that going to have a consequences on what you look like? Yeah, good, great question. It might. Let's talk about it. Whew. All right. So let's talk about a mutation. Remember, a mutation, I said is when there's a mistake. There's a random change, this is key, it's random, random change in those base pairs, right? If you're supposed to, your DNA is ATG, and you're supposed to have an ATG, maybe that A gets changed to a G, now you have G, uh, T, G, right? That might change what you look like because the DNA is now new instructions, right? So what a mutation is, okay? It's a random change, random change in the base pairs of your DNA. Random change in base pairs of DNA, random change in the base pairs of DNA. All right, guys, I'm gonna underline this because it's so important, guys. It's random. Mutations, you can't decide to have a mutation. 
right? They're random. They just happen sometimes. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. We're going to talk a lot about mutations when we start, start talking about evolution in our next couple videos. All right? So this usually happens when your cells are divided. So we talk about mitosis and meiosis. When the cells divide, they have to copy the DNA first, and sometimes there's a mistake, and that leads to a mutation. Or it can happen during translation and transcription as well. So, all right, this is a mistake. Mutations usually happen. There's a mistake in copying DNA during cell division. All right, so we talk about mitosis and meiosis. If there's a mistake when that happens, it could lead to a mutation. All right. And this is big, dude. Mutation, big guys. Mutations can be good or bad, right? They can cause an effect or not cause an effect as well. They can. Sometimes mutation happens and it's silent, right? Nothing change. The changes in your base pairs, but the same protein gets made, so nothing changes about you, right? Mutations can. Mutations can or cannot lead to changes in your phenotype. Can or cannot, guys, right? Mutation can happen, and it can cause a big consequence in your appearance or in your phenotype, or it can still happen and nothing will, and nothing will change, right? Those are called silent mutations. So even though some base pairs got changed, the same protein got made, so it still did the same job in your body, so nothing changed, right? Nothing changed about you. Okay, so that's what a mutation is. Now let's go over two major types of mutations we're going to talk about today. We're talking about gene mutations today. There's two types. We're going to talk about point mutations, also known as substitution mutations, and we're going to talk about frame shift mutations, all right? Point mutations are usually have smaller consequences for the most part. Sometimes they're silent, have no effect. And frame shift mutations, for the most part, usually have really big consequences if a frame shift mutation occurs, all right? So let's talk about the definitions, and we'll do a big example to end this video, okay? So a point mutation is when you switch or you substitute only one of those letters, one of those base pairs in your DNA, right? You think of it like a soccer game or a basketball game or any sports game. You sub in a player and sub out a player. You substitute, only change one, only change one, right? So a point mutation is a switch. Let's do red, we're writing red here. Switch only one base or nucleotide in DNA sequence. Switch, I spelled that right, switch only one uh, base slash nucleotide in a DNA sequence. All right, so you only switch one. So maybe you have ATA and you switch the last A to a G. Maybe ATA, switch it to ATG, right? Only change one letter. Only change one. That's substitution. All right? Usually small consequences. We'll talk about it in a minute. All right? And then frame shift usually has really big consequences, big changes, right? So frame shift, there's two types. Frame shift can either be an insertion, mutation, or it can be a deletion. Deletion mutation. All right? Insertion is when you insert slash add a base or nucleotide. And deletion, yeah, that's right, you got it, easy, right? Deletion, delete, delete, or remove a base. All right, so these can have big consequences because when this happens, you shift the reading frame of a DNA molecule, right? So what that means is DNA gets read Right, it's really long, it's getting red, turned into RNA, getting made into that protein. But once there is a mutation in that DNA, that one letter gets inserted, added, or one gets deleted, everything after that mutation then change. All the codons change. Right, so we're gonna do a big, big example to kind of highlight this and end this video. All right, so quick recap before we did our, our, uh, our example is that a mutation, remember, is a random, that's key, random change in the base pairs of your DNA. Those are those letters, A, T, C, and G. Right, it usually happens during the mistake when your cells divide, mitosis, meiosis. They can or cannot lead to changes in your phenotype. We'll talk about that in a minute, right? And the two types we're going to talk about are point mutations, also known as substitution, only switch one letter or one base. Frame shift have big consequences. 
that's when you either insert a letter, insert a base, or you delete a base, and everything changes after that, that point of mutation, all right? So let's do an example. Here we go. I'm going to erase this. Bum, 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 bum. All right, our example is I'm going to do an analogy today, guys. An analogy is like a comparison. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do an analogy today, so it's a comparison. Uh, I'm going to use a sentence as my analogy for a DNA molecule, right? Each letter in that sentence is going to represent a base or a nucleotide. One word is going to, re well, let's do it and I'll show you. All right, so my sentence today, uh, let's write in, I guess we'll just do black today. Okay, here's my example. Example. All right, so I'm going to write a sentence that says, the boy, uh, Boy, cut his lip. Whoa, the boy cut his lip. So that's what the DNA is saying. That's the instructions. The boy cut his lip. Let me, the boy should be capitalized. I don't know why I did that. All right, the boy cut his lip. This is our original DNA strand. So this is DNA. All right, the boy cut his lip. What do you guys notice about this sentence if you're just looking at it? What do you notice about each of these words? Yeah, that's right. Nice. Good observation. They're each three letters in length. Each word is only three letters. Why would I make them only three letters? Great question again. That's because, remember, each of these is a codon. Remember, guys, a codon is a sequence of three bases in a DNA sequence. So these letters represent the, base, the bases in the DNA. So maybe... This was A, T, T, right, in the DNA. Maybe this was C, G, C. Maybe this was G, C, C, etc. right? Right? These are representing a DNA sequence, right? This is the normal DNA. Now let's look at our, our examples of a point mutation and frame shift mutations, right? Let's start with a point mutation. All right, so I'm going to write point mutation here. Uh, point mutation. Point mutation. All right, I'm going to write this to, uh, how did red? I'm staying with red. All right, so I'm going to write the sentence again, the boy cut his lip. The boy uh, cut his lip. The boy cut his lip. Whoa, what happened? What's the difference between the original DNA and this new DNA? Where was the mutation? You're right, it happened right here. What I did is I substituted this D for this S. I replaced this S with a D. All I did is subbed one in, right? I subbed in the D. So now we see the sentence sounds a little different. The boy cut hid lip. Right? You still kind of can guess what I'm trying to say here, but you do see that it's a mutation. Something has changed, may or may not cause a change in your phenotype. Maybe uh, it won't cause a phenotype change because if the same amino acids are made, the same protein is made, Nothing's going to change, right? So the boy cut hid lip. Not a big change. Now let's do a frame shift mutation. Let's do, a, um, let's do an insertion, insertion mutation. All right, so these are frame shift. Frame shift. Right, we're going to do insertion. All right, insertion. All right, so remember, this is when you add a base, add a base. So I'm going to write... The boy cut the boy cut ahi ahi lip ahi sil pip. Right? The boy cut ahi sil ip or p. Right? Whoa, big change. That's crazy. Look at our original DNA. We we're supposed to say the boy cut his lip. Where was the mutation? We did an insertion. Yeah, we added this A. Check it out. This A got put in front of his. In front of his. So you notice his is still there. There's his. Lip is still there, right? But everything got shifted down. That's why it's called a frame shift. The whole DNA got shifted down after we added this A. And look at these codons. This is probably going to make a different amino acid. Remember that chart we were looking at? And we're going from inside to outside. This makes a new amino acid, this makes a new amino acid, 
right? It's gonna be a brand new protein, really big change in your phenotype, right? So frame shift, big change. Let's do the last one, let's do a deletion. Remember, this is still a frame shift, but now we're gonna delete and look at how it changes the sentence. All right, let's do a deletion. Uh, actually, let's do green. Deletion. All right, so the original sentence says the boy cut his lip. Now this one, if we're deleting something, we're gonna write the boy Boy, uth, isl, ip. Whoa, big change, right? Frame shift, big change, right? So the boy cut his lip. Look what happened here, guys. We deleted. What did we delete? We deleted the C. This C is now gone. The C is supposed to be here. We deleted the C. The boy cut. So cut should be there. Look, you'll notice his is still there. Lip is still there. But now everything got shifted this way, right? Frame shift. It shifted the reading frame. So now if this makes a new amino acid, new amino acid, way big consequences. Your phenotype's gonna be way different. So if the boy cut his lip made the protein for blue eyes, and now you have any of these frame shift mutations with brand new amino acids getting made, you're not gonna have blue eyes anymore. Maybe you have brown eyes, green eyes, hazel eyes, whatever, because you're making a new protein. Right? It's gonna go do a different job in your body. Right? So frame shift mutations, usually big consequences. Point mutations may or may not, they can sometimes be silent mutations, right? The same amino acids get made, same protein gets made, no change, right? Mutations, random change in the base pairs. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this example kind of illustrated the differences in these gene mutations. Remember guys, work hard, get smart, and I'll see you next time.